In this lesson, we're going to create a very simple piece of software called a console application, and it's going to display the Mr. Beast logo to whoever opens our piece of software. Let's get going. So now Visual Studio has been freshly installed, we're going to create our very first software application. It's going to be our very first one. It's going to be beginner friendly, and we're going to take it from the top. So let's get going. So once Visual Studio is open, we're going to click File, New, and Project. And then we'll have a window that looks similar to this. Now, if you don't have Visual Studio 2022, uh, that's the version I'm using right now, it may look slightly different. You know, you may see settings in different places. Things might be called something slightly different, but the general kind of principle still applies. Now, our very first software application is going to be a console app, and this is represented by this project template here. What a console application is, it's kind of like a black window. It's just It just has text on it. And the reason I'm using that is because it's very beginner friendly. There's no buttons, lists, images, or anything complicated. This is very, very beginner friendly, and this is why I'm using a console application. So if you don't actually see that in this list, you can search for it here by typing in console app or console application. And you can see all these templates will load up here. Uh, we want this one because we're writing in C-sharp. And it actually will run on Linux, Mac, Windows. So we're going to use this one. So we're going to click Next. We can call this whatever we want. It's up to you. You can leave it like that. Or you can you know, choose something more descriptive. So we're going to call it First Program. Uh, the location, you can choose a directory where you want to keep all your project files, that is up to you. So let's click next. Now this framework, I'm going to talk all about frameworks in a later tutorial, I want to keep this very simple. This list, it might have four, five, six, seven, all different numbers, we're just going to leave it at seven. If yours has four, four is fine, it's still going to work. If you see this checkbox here that says, do not use top level statements, make sure it's checked. This is very important. So let's click create. And this is what we see right here. Now, Visual Studio is actually given all of this code for us. And the reason they do that is to make it more user friendly so we can get started. As a first time user, you probably have no idea what this means. And that doesn't really matter. All of these lines here I'll be covering in a later tutorial and you will learn what they, you know, they kind of mean in time. To keep this beginner friendly, the only line right now anyway you need to concern yourself with is this one right here. So in this tutorial we're going to put all our code between this curly brace here and this one here. So all in the middle and we can put more lines in here if we want to. So in this tutorial, we're only talking about this section here. Do not worry about any of this. So let's remove all that complexity. So let's talk about this. What does it do? So this it says console dot right line hello world. So in order to actually try and run this program, I need to talk about what is called a compiler. Now Visual Studio, it has an inbuilt compiler and because we're writing C sharp, it has a C sharp compiler in there. And what the C sharp compiler does, it takes all our code here, that's everything in this white window, and compiles it. And if we're using Windows, for example, it's going to create an exe file for us. And what an exe file is, is it's, a, it's called a binary file. Maybe you don't really need to know that right now, but it's called a binary file. And if we want to run this program on, say, a Mac, for example, then it's going to create a binary file that a Mac would understand. If we want it to run on an Android, like an Android phone, it will create a binary file that the Android phone can understand. So that's really what a compiler does. Uh, in, an, in a very small kind of non-complicated nutshell, it takes all of our code and compiles it into one kind of binary file. Uh, so, th And in order to do that, in order to run the compiler, you see this little green play button up here where it says our project name called First Program. When we click this button, this is where we say, oh, hey, Visual Studio, can you tell our compiler to take all our code and make it into a file so we can run the software? 
that is exactly what it does so we're going to click this right here and what happens is our little black window appears and immediately disappears so two things here all of this stuff down here you know you saw all that text kind of going crazy that is the compiler so the compiler is saying okay i've done this 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 and i finally you know kind of spat out this exe file at the bottom of it that's because i'm using windows it's created an exe file for me now the exe file has been created the software is run it tries to open the exe file for us and that was that black window that just appeared but then it instantly disappeared and it instantly disappeared because we're not actually telling it to stay open visual studio did a good job of you know putting in this kind of sample code for us but it also didn't you know kind of keep the software open so we can actually see what is going on so i'm going to type one more line and that's going to keep the black window open for us so i'm going to type console because console is the black window so we want to say oh hey console uh, read line right so that is what i'm putting there and that will keep the console window open let's talk about this line real quick so what this does it waits for user input so for example have you seen a software you know any piece of software that says hey what is your name and then you type your name so what happens is when we run this line of code uh, the black window is waiting for our input and that just keeps the window open so let, let's just run this software now and now you can see the window is open it's actually stayed open it's not going away that's just because it's waiting for our user input but it's kind of like a little dirty kind of hacky way of keeping it open so we can see what is going on so this black window here is our console application it's our very first piece of software pat yourselves on the back <laughs> it doesn't do much the only thing it does is say hello world it's telling you it's alive you know it's saying hello to the world that's all it does right now very simple but uh, don't sell yourself short it's your very first piece of software so we can either close this by hitting enter or crossing it off here and that is it in our nutshell our very first software application now how do we expand on this well let's talk about one other thing first and that is uh, case sensitivity in c sharp and a few little caveats as well so you notice here where it says read line and write line it's actually case sensitive and what that means is if i change this uppercase l to a lowercase l you can see i have this red line underneath and that's saying oh i can't actually find this you know in the system uh, it doesn't exist that's because a lowercase l and an uppercase l in c sharp are two very different things uh, so bear that in mind it needs to be case sensitive and the last thing is that all lines must end with a semicolon if you forget the semicolon then we're going to get a similar thing happen you see this little red squiggle here if we hover over that with the mouse it's saying semicolon expected so it's actually telling you what the problem is and if you ever have an error where you have the red squiggly line and you try and run the program you're going to get something like this and you will get very familiar with this dialogue in your programming ventures trust me <laughs> and then it will kind of tell you what the problem is down here you can kind of double click it and it alerts you to this and that's just saying the semicolon is missing so now i've talked very briefly about what these do um let's just talk about this bit here so we're, what we want to do is say oh hey black window write the line to the window and we want to write hello world that is all it's doing you've probably worked that out yourself but now I've told you that we can actually expand on this. We can actually say, oh, hey, let's write three hello worlds. So we save that, click the button, and now we have three of those. Now you see where this is going. <laughs> so in our example, right at the start, I said we're going to display the Mr. Beast logo. Now I, uh, I have an ASCII file for the Mr. Beast uh, logo. ASCII is just uh, a text representation of an image. I'll show you what that means now. It's all going to make sense. So you can see here, I have a Mr. Beast logo here uh, in uh, Notepad. <laughs> uh, 
and I've added the console right lines before it. So, so we can see that here. I'm just going to copy all of that and I'm going to paste it between these curly braces like I uh, talked about earlier. Right there. <laughs> I'm going to save that. I'm going to press the green button. I'm going to open this window so we can see it. And I'm going to scroll up. So that's our very first piece of software. As soon as someone opens your piece of software, they're going to see the Mr. Beast logo. So it's that simple how we can modify that message and create a whole new picture. And when we look into the code here, it's just multiple right line statements. And that creates all these M's here and a very nice kind of character design on the logo here. And before I end this lesson, I'm just going to show you how this all ties together so it sort of makes sense in your head. So remember when we created a brand new project and we have this location field. Well, I'm just going to go into this folder right now. And now I'm in that directory on our computer. We can see Visual Studio has created a series of folders and files for us. So inside here, we have what's called a solution file here. It's created another folder, so we'll go in there. It's created even more files. This one has our kind of code in. Uh, but if we look inside this bin folder here, and then inside this debug folder right here, and inside this one, you can see there's a few files right here. But in the middle here, this is our binary file, and because I'm using Windows, it's created an .exe file for us. And if we double click this, we can even send it to a friend, for example. And they can double click it. And when you maximize it, you can see the Mr. Beast logo. So you can see this is kind of how it all ties together. Visual Studio um, tells the compiler, oh, hey, take all the code, create an .exe file for us, and put it in this folder right here. All of the other files I'll talk about at a later date. But for the purpose of simplicity, it creates our .exe file for us, and that is our very first piece of software.